Hi, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In this video, we're going to learn the one to four player game, Flip City by Tasty Minstrel Games. You may have played games where you're building a city with cards, but were they double-sided? Probably not, so join me at the table and let's learn how to play. Flip City is made up of 86 double-sided cards. To set up the game, first sort them by the six different types, which is indicated by the name at the top of the card along with the unique image. Now, because these are double-sided, it may actually appear like there's 12 different types, and technically there are. So first, make sure you have all of them flipped to their front side. And you can tell the front side because it will show a purple arrow in this area as opposed to a green arrow. Except for the residential area, which shows a purple arrow on both sides. So this one, you'll just have to remember that the front side is here. So once you have them all on the front side, sort them into the various stacks. And I like to organize them in ascending order based on their cost value, which is shown here in the top right hand corner. The office deck is an optional expansion included in the game, and you may wish to remove it for your first play. Now, deal each player four residential areas, and then one more, but flipped over to the apartment side. Then deal one more of each other type. I'm going to set up a two-player game, so each player would get a set of cards that looks like this. All remaining residential areas you can return to the box. Place the remaining building stacks in a general supply nearby where all of the players can reach. Now players can shuffle their decks. And you'll be doing this throughout the game. Just be mindful not to accidentally flip your deck or any of the cards in it over when you're shuffling. And while shuffling, or at any point during the game, should you forget the orientation of one of your cards. Maybe you drop it accidentally. Then make sure you shuffle it back into your deck on its front side. This just provides a consistent way of handling those situations should they occur, but I don't think you'll find they happen that often. Also, make sure for your last couple of shuffles, you aren't looking at the top of your deck. Maybe shuffle under the table if you feel that's necessary, so that you don't know the top card until you're finished. Now, this may seem tricky at first, but that's because most of us aren't used to dealing with a double-sided deck. And I think you'll find after a couple of rounds, this just becomes second nature. So obviously, you're always going to be able to tell the top card of your deck during the game. And that's fine, but that's the only one you should be able to see. So I like to hold my deck during the game like this, and that ensures I don't accidentally see something underneath. You will be drawing from the deck, and again, just make sure once you draw, you're only seeing the next card underneath and not everything else. And that's the setup. In Flip City, you'll be playing buildings from your deck to provide you with certain benefits. But some of the buildings also add unhappiness to your city. Get too much unhappiness and you lose everything you'd gained that turn. Stop soon enough and you can collect cash and points. Cash will help you buy new buildings or upgrade ones that you already have. Points help you win the game. So to start, you need to choose a first player. The rules say it's whoever last flipped a table but you can just choose randomly if you want. The first player starts their turn by conducting the play cards phase. Here, you will play buildings from the top of your deck, one at a time, to the table in front of you. Now, I recommend that you do this in a left to right pattern. Of course, as you play one card, you can see what's coming next, which is fine, as that will help you decide whether to continue playing or not. But as mentioned, just make sure the cards underneath stay hidden. If a building you play shows this symbol in the blue area, then it has an effect which must be resolved before going further. For example, this convenience store says that if you play 18 or more cards this turn, you win. So this building is actually adding a new way for you to win the game. Any symbols found just above this blue box on the left side indicate what you're gaining for this building. This represents cash, which I can use later. I have a factory on top of my deck, and I can choose to continue this phase by playing it. Along with the two additional cash that I'll be collecting, I also first have to resolve this effect. And it says that if this wasn't the last card of my deck, then I must place the bottom card into my discard pile. So each player should keep their own personal discard area. Let's say I decide to keep playing and put out this central park. Its effect states that I may buy one additional building during the building phase. We'll discuss buying in a moment, but just note that effects stack up. So if I played another central park this turn, I would get to buy another additional building. And this symbol represents points. 
So the Central Park provides me with two of them. Playing eight points spread across any of the buildings that you play in a single turn is one of the ways that you can win the game. At any point during my turn, I can decide to stop playing buildings, unless I'm not given a choice. The residential area is a good example of that, and it's on top of my deck, so let's take a closer look. This symbol here means the effect is conditional, and the condition is having the residential area on top of your deck, in which case it says you have to play it. So is this a big deal? After all, as you can see, I'm gaining an extra cash, but I'm also collecting an unhappiness symbol, or as I like to call it, a frowny. So what's the problem with the frowny? Well, if you ever end up with three of them in front of you, your turn immediately ends, and every card that you played is discarded, ignoring any cash or points or effects that you might have had. So, easy solution, don't play three frownies. Oh, but wait, the top building of my deck is another residential area, so because of its conditional effect, I have to play it. That means I have two frownies. So what should I do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop playing cards. <laughs> the next building would provide me with a frowny, but it doesn't say that I have to play it, so I won't. In this way, the game has a push-your-luck element. Because once you have one, and especially once you have two frowny faces on the buildings in front of you, you're going to hesitate before playing that great building on the top of your deck, for fear of there being a residential area underneath that you'll be forced to play. And as soon as you have those three frownies, again, your turn immediately ends. And that timing is important, because if you revealed another residential area, you don't play it, because your turn is already over. And you would then take the buildings that you had played, and again, put them in your discard pile. Now, assuming that you simply chose to stop playing buildings, and you didn't bust, then in that case, you take the cash that you collected from the buildings you played, and you can choose to use it in one of three different ways. The first option you have is you could buy a building from the general supply. Normally, you can only purchase one building. However, I played this Central Park during my turn, and its effect said that I can buy an additional building. When you buy a building, its cost is shown in the top right-hand corner, and you don't get change back, so any cash you don't spend this turn, you will lose. In this case, I collected one, two, three, four, five cash. I could buy a factory, I could buy a hospital or a convenience store. In this case, I think I'll buy two convenience stores. The buildings that you purchase go directly to your discard pile. If a stack ever runs out in the general supply, then you may no longer buy buildings of that type during the game. Rather than buy a new building during the building phase, I could instead choose to flip one building in my discard pile. So not one in my deck and not one in the play area. I happen to have a residential area in my discard pile from when I played my factory, which forced me to discard the bottom building of my deck. Let's take a look at how I would flip this. To flip a building, use the cash you collected this turn to pay the flip fee, which is shown here with the purple arrow. And then flip the card over and keep it within your discard pile. The flip side is a new building type with new abilities. Oftentimes, you'll find these more beneficial than the other side of the building. For example, this apartment will also give me one frowny face, but unlike a residential area, I'm not forced to play it when I reveal it. So it's not as dangerous. Flipping in this case was easy. I only had one building to choose from in my discard pile. But if you had multiple, you can go through your discard pile at any time and see what you have and you could choose to flip any one of the buildings that were in there. But if instead of flipping, you want to do something else, there is one final option. You can develop. With this option, you choose one of the buildings in the general supply, pay its purchase cost and its flip cost, and then collect that building flipped over and put it in your discard pile. In this case, we had collected five cash, so I could afford to develop the convenience store, flipping it over, and putting the shopping mall side into my discard pile. At the end of the build phase, if on the buildings in front of you, you have eight points, then you win. Or as we saw, if you played the convenience store and have 18 buildings in front of you, you also win. But it's important to check this at the end of the build phase, because during the play cards phase, you may put out a building that would give you, for example, your eighth point. But if that building also gives you your third frowny, then your turn immediately ends, and you don't win. 
because you check the win condition at the end of the build phase. Now, assuming you didn't win, then your turn is simply over. Take all of the buildings that you played and put them in your discard pile. And you just ignore any cash or unhappiness or points that you didn't use. The next player, then, in clockwise order, takes their turn. One thing to keep in mind is that during your play cards phase, you may run out of cards in your deck. At that moment, you can choose to stop and move directly to the building phase. Or you may collect up your discard pile and reshuffle it to create a new deck, where again, you can stop and go on to the building phase or keep playing buildings. But be careful because you could reshuffle into a residential area, which I've done here, and now I'm gonna have to play it. And that's two frownies and look at this, another residential area. So my turn is going to immediately end. So you wanna think about whether or not it's a good option to reshuffle your deck when you run out. If you choose not to reshuffle and move on to the building phase, then at the end of your turn, reshuffle your discard pile and then you'll have a new deck for the start of your next turn. There is one other kind of action you can take, which I need to tell you about. It's called recycling. And you can do this whenever and as often as you want during your play cards phase. Recycling allows you to go through your discard pile and find buildings there that have this green recycle arrow. You can then choose to flip them over, keeping them in your discard pile, but then you gain the effect listed here. As an example, let's say these are the buildings I had played already on my turn. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points. Unfortunately, the top card of my deck is another frowny face. I don't dare play it because that would cause me to have three and my turn would be over. Well, over here in my discard pile, I fan through it and sure enough, I have this station. And it has a recycle ability, which if I flip it over my discard pile, will provide me with one more point. That's enough to win. So I would just end my turn right there. If you flip the shopping mall over for its recycle ability, it will give you one additional cash for this turn. This recycle effect gives you an unhappiness symbol. That seems bad, and it is, but you may do it to trigger this effect. This says that when the card is recycled, you can then shuffle your discard pile into your deck, which you may want to do in order to change the building currently on top of your deck to something better. This recycle effect increases the limit on the number of unhappiness symbols you can collect during that turn by one. And finally, this means after recycling this card, you place it on top of your deck. And that's how you play Flip City. At the end of this video, I'll lay out all of the buildings in case you're curious to see their abilities. The rules also have instructions for solo play, which I'll leave you to discover on your own. But if you have any questions about anything you saw in this video, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.